What's going on, fam? Sports reporters without pay. We in the building again, man. I ain't did a hot take in a minute. But here we are. We about past the halfway point of the NFL season. Um, it's a good time to discuss, you know, the MVP race or what's left of the MVP race. So before I jump into, like, the favorites, um, talk about a few guys who I don't think are going to win the award. They're not going to win the award, but they deserve, you know, a shout-out or some recognition. Um, the media has now all of a sudden jumped on the Andrew Luck bandwagon. I don't really get it. The Colts are 5-5. Five and five. He's having a solid season. But the media is now screaming, Andrew Luck, throw him in the MVP race. He's completing about 67% of his passes, 277 yards a game, 29 touchdowns, 6 interceptions. If that, if that holds up, he's on pace for about 4,432 yards, 46 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. Pretty solid season um, with the Colts sitting at 5-5. Five and five. I don't see how anybody can really make a case for him to be put in the MVP race. Um, if he received any votes at all, he'll be in that 6 to 10 range. I don't see him finishing top five. Um, but the media has jumped on that bandwagon. Um, another guy who won't receive probably many votes, but quiet as kept, he's having a hell of a season right now, man. Matt Ryan's completing 71% of his passes, which for him would be a career high right now. He's completing 334 yards per game with 24 touchdowns and 5 interceptions. Um, that puts him on pace for about 5,344 yards, 35 touchdowns, and 7 picks. Um, that's a hell of a season, man. Uh, the only problem is Atlanta's sitting at 4-7 and seven right now, and as we all know, when it boils down to NFL MVP, you just got to win games. Um, statistically, right now, he's having arguably a top five or so season ever from a quarterback again you know on pace for 5,000 yards completing 71 percent of his passes um that's pretty solid so um but again they're not winning the games they're sitting at four and seven won't see it another guy that's flying under the radar that many people aren't going to talk about but if you look at his team they go as he goes Ezekiel Elliott man he's sitting on 1,074 yards as of right now 97.6 yards a game averaging about 4.9 yards a carry Got 363 yards receiving and two touchdowns, too. Um, if you look, this year, Dallas is starting to get him involved in the passing game. Those 363 yards tie what's already his career high. That matches his output from his rookie season with five games left in the season. He's on pace for about 1,561 yards, over 2,100 yards from scrimmage um, with 12 touchdowns. Not, not finding the end zone a lot, and Dallas is only sitting at about 6-5 and five right now. So he's not going to make a whole lot of noise in the race, but he's having a heck of a season right now. So from there, I jump into uh, my top five. And, and these next three guys, I don't think they have a real chance at winning it, but they'll probably round out that top five. Um, number three, May... Me at this point, I, I'm looking at him right now. And Phillip Rivers, he's completing about 67% of his passes, 286 yards a game, 23 touchdowns and six picks. He's on pace for about 4,500 yards, 37 touchdowns and eight picks, and he has the San Diego Chargers looking really good this season. They're sitting at seven and three. Um, they kind of overshadowed by the fact that they're playing in the same division as the Kansas City Chiefs. But don't sleep on it. I mean, if the Chargers go out and win this week, they'll put them at 8-3. and three. They'll only be a game behind uh, Kansas City. So be on the lookout for them. I mean, if they can make a real strong push down down the stretch, who knows? We could be looking at Phillip Rivers really jumping into that MVP conversation because we know how much wins and loss play into that. But right now, I have him sitting at third. Four or five are interchangeable for me, and that's probably because they cancel each other out. When you look at the Los Angeles Rams, you go, who's really the catalyst for that offense? I mean, we all know they have this high-powered offense. They go out, they score a lot of points, but you go, who, who's the best player on that offense? Um, you look at Todd Gurley. This guy, what, he's 95 yards per game right now on the ground, averaging five yards per carry with 13 touchdowns. He has 1,484 yards from scrimmage. That puts him on pace for about... 15, 20 on the ground, over 2,200 yards from scrimmage with about 24 touchdowns. Um, the touchdowns is the big thing, man. This guy's finding the end zone. Uh, I don't think I said this already. He's at 17 touchdowns right now. So, I mean, he's on pace for 24 touchdowns over 2,200 yards from scrimmage. Any other season, you're looking at a guy who may be a front runner for MVP. The only problem with him is... He plays on a team with a quarterback who's completing 67.7% of his passes, 322 yards a game with 26 touchdowns and 6 picks. That puts this guy on pace for a 5,000-yard season, which, you know, in years past when Marino did it, 5,000 was like a big deal. Um, now more and more guys are doing it. Um, 
quite a few have thrown for 5,000, but that's still elite territory. You're talking about 5,100 yards, 38 touchdowns, and 9 picks. That would be a heck of a season for a team that may finish the year with no more than two losses. So, um... Those two guys, I mean, you, you, you can interchange them at four and five. In fact, you can throw Rivers in that group. They, they're interchangeable from three to five. Any of those guys can finish three, four, or five, and I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but at, at the heart of it, what this all says is the MVP race is down to a two-horse race, pretty much. Only two guys can win it, um, and we all know who those two guys are, man. If you look at what Drew Brees is doing this year, um, it's kind of unreal. The guy's completing 76.4% of his passes, which right now would break his own record of 72. Um, completing only not only 285 yards, but Drew Brees only, you know, 285 yards a game. 29 touchdowns and only two picks, which is insane. A 29-2 ratio, right? Um, his quarterback rating right now is 127.3, which would destroy the league record. So he's on pace to break the league record in completion percentage and break the league record in a quarterback rating. Um, if his numbers hold up, he's on pace to finish with about 4,560 yards, 43 touchdowns and three picks. That's insane. 43 to three. Um, again, and, and, and I watched, I watched the Saints the other night and I said something, man, like when, when a guy has a high completion percentage, I mean, he's got completing 76.4% of his pass. You would think he's dinking and dunking West Coast type offense. This guy don't miss throws down the field. This guy dinking and dunking 10, 15, 20 yards down the field. He's just making every throw possible. He's playing at an unbelievably elite level. Um, the, the yards really don't match up to what we've seen from Drew Brees in his career before. But I think he's playing at the highest level he's ever played. Um, and he's going to have that narrative on his side, kind of the career achievement. He's never won it before. Kind of a swan song kind of deal. So um, we got Drew Brees up there. Then again, we know who the other candidate is. You got Patrick Mahomes. Chiefs sitting at 9-2 and two right now. This guy's completing 67.5% of his passes, 330 yards a game. 37 touchdowns and 10 picks with a quarterback rate of 117.9. Um... Again, if that holds up, he's on pace for about 5,280 yards, 54 touchdowns. That's 5,280 yards as of right now today would be third all time. 54 touchdowns will put him at number two all time in the history of the NFL. Um, and again, a quarterback rating of 117.9 that as of today would be sitting at number four to include Drew Brees this year. So before this year, that 117.9 would have him as the third best quarterback rating. Um, of any quarterback that's played a full 16 games. I think Nick Foles is sitting at number four right now, but he only played 10 games that year. So um, it, 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 only only one of those two guys is going to win it. Um, another fun stat, man, QBR, which wasn't tracked until about 2006. Drew Brees is currently sitting at 89, um, and Patrick Mahomes is sitting at 83.9. So since the stat was tracked in 2006, only a select few quarterbacks have had a QBR of 80. Tom Brady's in there. Peyton Manning's in there. Drew Brees has done it before. Um, Aaron Rodgers has done it. And the great Tony Romo has done it, right? Um, and in that, I think the, uh, the the career high right now for QBR for a season is 88. And that was Tom Brady in the year he you know broke all the records with Randy Moss and everything. So Drew Brees, again, is playing at an unbelievably high level. Um, he's on pace to break the, the, the all-time record for completion percentage, quarterback rating, passer rating, uh, and then Patrick Mahomes is on pace to have a top five all-time passing yard season, uh, uh, maybe number two all-time, could possibly reach for number one all-time and passing touchdowns for a season. So I think it boils down to those two guys, and I'm, I'm not gonna, it's, it's hard to pick one. Um, right now, I have Mahomes as the front runner. Um, people love yards, people love touchdowns, and he's, you know, blowing the NFL away with that. And also, uh, the Chiefs have a different look about them. Like, this is the first time you look at the Chiefs in, in recent years and think to yourself, man, they really could make some noise. In years past, you always went, yeah, just wait for it. Just wait for it. As Stephen A. Smith says about Dallas, the Chiefs are kind of like an accident waiting to happen. You know when it matters most, uh, they'll falter. But this Chiefs team has a different feel about them, and it all has to do with that guy in the center. And um, if I had to make a prediction, I think I really do, and I've been telling people this, we just may see – for the first time in a very long time. Co-MVPs? How about it?